Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Welcome to another video. Today we're talking about the Premier League title race. Arsenal and Manchester City battling it out for this season's Premier League crown. Of course, this past weekend, things only intensified and heated up even further. With Manchester City closing the gap even more so on Arsenal after their 3-1 victory over Leicester on Saturday. And obviously Arsenal dropping points to West Ham on Sunday. It means that the gap at the top of the table is now cut down to just four with Manchester City having a game in hand. And it all seems that it's all boiling and heading towards boiling point towards that game that these two sides have got to play against each other at the Etihad coming up very, very soon. That one could be the, a, a definite Premier League title decider and one that a lot of eyes will all be watching. We're going to be talking all about this title race. We're going to be talking about Arsenal, Manchester City, the title race that be and everything else that goes along with it. But before we go any further, I would like to remind you to please uh, like the video and also subscribe if you're new. Both things are always are very greatly appreciated. And also for you lots to get involved in the comments section. I want your thoughts, your comments, opinions, predictions, feelings, whatever you want to call it on this particular topic, on the Premier League title race, on Man City, on Arsenal, everything else that goes along with that as well down below in the comment section because I'm sure it'll make for interesting reading as well. But without further ado, let's get into this title race. Let's talk Arsenal, let's talk Manchester City and let's talk where I believe the Premier League crown is going to be going this season. Look, I'll say right first and foremost right off the bat, I've backed Arsenal a lot this season. I've, I've even backed them a lot beforehand. Um, and I said that when things were going great and things were going really well, Arsenal would win the Premier League title. I've made a couple of videos on the title race and I've said that Arsenal would win because I feel I feel like they had a lot of hunger, a lot of desire, and I felt like they were showing champions, uh, champion-like qualities uh, right the way through their squad. Um, something that I've noticed in, in certain squads with Liverpool and Manchester City over the past few years that I thought Arsenal might be able to hold their nerve a little bit and get through the title running. The kind of final furlong, if you like, um, to get to the towards that Premier League title. Obviously, these past couple of weeks, Arsenal have stuttered and stumbled. Um, does that mean I change my opinion based on them stuttering and stumbling? Not necessarily. I'm still going to back them until uh, until I'm completely convinced that Manchester City cannot catch them. Um, I, obviously, that game at the Etihad you would say that Manchester City are going to be the favourites to go in that. But that's not to say that Arsenal can't get anything out of that game. And I think a draw in that game would do them some good. And then from there, it's all about how they manage the remaining games. Um, look, this past weekend, like I say, Arsenal dropped more points. Manchester City closed the gap even further. City were dominant. They were rampant against Leicester. They were 3-0 up inside the opening half an hour. They went on to see the game out. They conceded the goal, but it didn't really count too much. It proved to be a consolation. City win 3-0. Arsenal go 2-0 up in 10 minutes. They can't see the game out. They miss a penalty that probably could have killed the game off to make it 3-1. But then West Ham go on and equalise moments later. And they see the game out to earn a point against Arsenal. Arsenal drop two points. The lead at the top of the table is cut to four. Last week, you can look at the Liverpool game for Arsenal and you can say that it was a bottle job. It was a bottle job. I, th I personally believe it was. And I think that any team that goes 2-0 up against someone, regardless of who they are, and they can't see that game out, regardless of the circumstances, unless you completely lose your head, which is then is definitely a bottle job. You shouldn't be losing that two goal lead. You shouldn't be dropping dropping points or not getting through a cup game from a two nil lead position, regardless of where that two nil lead is. You can say last week that okay, Arsenal haven't had the best of times at Anfield. Arsenal have been poor at Anfield these past few years. They don't really like that ground. There's some sort of mental block there or whatever it may be. But it was a bottle job, definitely, and. Although that may be the case, you can argue that, okay, a point against Liverpool, a tough Liverpool side, despite what the season their season has been, it's still a tough side uh, with Liverpool because they're at Anfield, it's always a tough ground, they seem to pick up this weird spiritual energy from the crowd that drives them on further. Okay, it's a point, just get out of there with a point, it's fine. 
Dropping two points to West Ham, though, who've had a very poor season. They seem to be putting... They seem to be putting their eggs in the Europa Conference League basket, so to speak, um, as well as trying to stave off relegation. That's poor. That is definitely poor. That is definitely a bottle job. That is definitely two points dropped rather than, say, a point gained, which is always kind of the, the, the spin and narrative behind a draw um, sometimes. That is just uh, unacceptable and poor. Especially because you had a chance to kill the game off from the penalty spot. And yes, missed penalties do happen. But at the end of the day, like, you shouldn't be still bottling a two-goal lead to West Ham. It's, it, it, it shouldn't happen. It, it definitely shouldn't happen. And obviously that's opened the door even more so for Manchester City. Um, Arsenal play this weekend. City are in FA Cup action. So they'll be having another game in hand over Arsenal. Big pressure on Arsenal to get the job done there. I think they are against Southampton. You would expect, obviously, Arsenal to beat Southampton and the relegation threatened side. But again, there's just a little bit more doubt that creeps into the mind now of whether Arsenal are not handling the pressure. And the past couple of results have seemed to suggest that Arsenal are not doing that. Whether that means that they'll fight back or not remains to be seen. I think they will fight back. I think they will get a result this weekend. They'll go into that game at, again, at the Etihad again, um, seven points clear. And then from there, they've got to play it smart. So just because City have two games in hand does not mean that, that assuming Arsenal win, obviously, that will be six points on the board. City still have to go to them games and win. And I guarantee this. City will drop points between now and the end of the season. I guarantee, I'm sticking my neck out on the line, I'm saying that I guarantee City will drop points between now and the end of the season in a game other than potentially that Arsenal game. I look at their other games and, okay, they've, they've got Chelsea who aren't in the best of form, but Chelsea could just have one of those days, you know? City could have one of those days where they slip up. They see it as a potential banana skin. City have got Fulham uh, away, again, Fulham at home is pretty tough and has been known to be pretty tough for a lot of teams this season. I know they are without Mitrovic, but again, could be one of them banana skin games where if you take it too lightly, so, you know, you, you could slip up. They've got Everton. Everton relegation threatened. Might just click into another gear on that day and get something from that game if obviously they need to from obviously being threatened rele with relegation. I think they've got Brighton as well. That's a rearranged game. Brighton, extremely tough this season. They've been class. I would suspect that Brighton will go um, will, will go hard in that game simply for the reason that they're still in pursuit of European football. And then they've got Brentford on the final day of the season. We've already seen what Brentford can do to teams when um, they hit them on the counter-attack. We already know that Brentford were one of the few teams this season to already beat Manchester City so far in this campaign. So again, a lot can happen in terms of Manchester City's results and, and, and fixtures that maybe, just maybe, they are going to drop points between now and the end of the season. I am saying that I think that will definitely happen other than the Arsenal game. Obviously, Arsenal's fixtures aren't as, aren't as easy either. The three that easily stand out to me, they've got Chelsea at the beginning of next month again. Chelsea not in the best of form under Frank Lampard. Arsenal should be winning that game. They should be the favourites. But again, it is Chelsea. They'll want to dent Arsenal's title charge as much as possible. And to say that they throw it into complete chaos. Will that happen? Remains to be seen. They've got, got Newcastle at St. James's Park. Very tough place to go this season. Newcastle have only lost three times all season. And only to two teams. So that's going to be tough. I think they've only lost one once at home as well against Liverpool. So that's going to be a tough place for Arsenal to go. And then, of course, they've got Brighton themselves, albeit at the Emirates. But Brighton are still very, very tough this season, playing some excellent football right now in pursuit of uh, European football. Their fixtures are just as tough. And then beyond that point, they've got the likes of Forest and Wolves, teams that they should be beating but they have definitely got a few tough games in there. And like I say, similar to Manchester City, if they take their eye off a few of them games that maybe you might think are more favourable, they could slip up even more. And that would obviously clearly tell that they're not handling the pressure at all. I think for a lot of rivals, 
they need to hope that City slip up. I'm hoping City slip up. Because they're on course to make massive history this season. Not only are they on course to win three Premier League titles on the bounce, which would equal like the record of Sir Alex Ferguson at Manchester United, they're also on course to win the treble. They've got a very, very good chance of winning the treble. Massive games coming up. Massive times for Pep Guardiola's side and for his Manchester City side. And look, you have to hold your hands up and say that this Manchester City side are phenomenal. Whether they have... Erling Haaland, who is an absolute freak of nature, who equaled Mohamed Salah's uh, goal-scoring record this past weekend at game week 30 alone. He has eight more weeks, eight more matches to obviously extend that goal-scoring record to as many as he so desires. I reckon he'll get like six or seven more goals between now and the end of the season and then uh, and then obviously uh, smash that new record or whatever it may be. But whether they have him or not, this City side is still a phenomenal team. We've seen it this season so many times, with or without him. They are absolutely incredible. Um, I don't. There's always been a little thing in my mind that's made them. That's made me think they're a little bit different to other City sides. That's because they're in transition, and I think that this City side's only going to get worse in terms of rival fans and rival teams and everything, they're going to get better as if you're a Manchester City fan because they're going to gel more and they're going to be in uh, less in transition. I think this season's been a bit of a season in transition. Haaland's had to gel in and obviously he's hit the ground running, obviously. But again, it, it, with, with more experience, with being around those players more often, they're only going to get used to him more, know that his kind of style is, know where he's going to make a run and so on and so forth. And he's going to get even scarier for next season. He's probably going to go on and break his own record in terms of goal scoring and so on and so forth. And the players that they're going to bring in are going to be even scarier. The players that are going to gel are going to be even scarier. The transition is going to continue. Guardiola is going to continue to refresh. And it's going to get scarier and scarier and scarier for, for the teams that are around them to try and topple this absolute giant of Manchester City. And whilst it might, to a neutral, might sound interesting and might sound like a, uh, like a very interesting sort of story, it does make the Premier League a little boring. You know, it's turning a little bit into the Bundesliga a little bit. And we need and we need these stories like Arsenal to kind of pull through in the end and to obviously stop this from becoming a league in which is heavily dominated by one side. I should know that as much as anyone. Liverpool fans should know that as much as anyone, that it's difficult to stop the City side when they go through the gears and when they start ra raising their level at this stage of the season. We've seen it time and time again. We've been the victims of it time and time again, you know. Um, we've seen T uh, City continuously crank through the gears at this stage of the season to be almost unstoppable. They do have a moment within them. Guardiola does have a moment within himself in which he overthinks a game or he takes a game too lightly or whatever the case may be that makes him drop a few points here and there. We saw it last season uh, towards the end where City could have had the title pretty much sewn up on the final day of the season, but they dropped points to West Ham on the penultimate game of their season to draw 2-2. And Riyad Mahrez missed that penalty in the final minutes to take the game right the way down to the wire. And obviously, again, they almost slipped up again. If Aston Villa had held their nerve on that final day when they were 2-0 up, things could have been very different indeed from, last, from the last campaign. But... This is just what Manchester City do, and Arsenal have got to find a way to stop it. And obviously, the way that they can stop it is by playing it smart. They need to win the remaining games. They need to go into that game against Manchester City at the Etihad, and they need to pull out a result. It sounds simple. It sounds stupid of me saying it, but they need to pull out a result if they are going to salvage... Uh, their Premier League title charge because a lot of Arsenal fans that I've been seeing have been calling it now. They've been saying we should throw in the towel now. Can't believe we bottled it. We're going to be a laughing stock. And yeah, to certain fans and to certain rivals, they may be. You know, they, they, they may be. 
um, a laughing stock. They may be a club that is um, going to be bantered a little bit because obviously Arsenal gave it the vegan. But, you know, no one expected this from Arsenal. No one expected it. No one expected them to get to this stage of the season still in the title race. No one expected them to get here. And, you know, that's it. No one expected them to do this. And, and obviously, I know that over a course of a season, uh, objectives change, goals change, um, and, and um, expectations change. But at the end of the day, this is what Arsenal fans have been wanting. Arsenal fans have been wanting to be in these title races and these title charges for under 20 years now. Ever since they moved stadium, ever since they got past the invincible season, Arsenal have been wanting these kinds of seasons. And now they're in them. I feel like they may have just took it a little bit too for granted. Yes, they probably shouldn't have lost it from the position that they're in. They're probably not looking forward to getting bantered and getting, uh, you know, the, the mick took out of them or whatever the case may be. But at the end of the day, they wanted this. They wanted these kinds of seasons. And again, they're finding it difficult and they're finding what Liverpool fans have, fi have been finding that in a lot of other seasons, they probably would have been title con uh, title champ uh, champions by now. They probably would have had uh, more of, more of a confident um, feeling going into the running of this season that they are going to lift that Premier League title come the end of the campaign. But it's against a formidable Manchester City side, a phenomenal Manchester City side, and we have to hold our hands up and say that they are amazing they are phenomenal they are, could be on the verge of m major history this season considering the the three p and obviously the triple in the same campaign could be absolutely phenomenal for manchester city and for pep guardiola in terms of his management and uh, and everything else that goes along with that for arsenal they just got to go and throw caution to the wind a little bit I think I'm still backing Arsenal to an extent I still think that Arsenal can do it and I think that obviously a massive kind of overthrowing of the king so to speak in Manchester City will will be kind of poetic and in a way and a bit artistic in a way in terms of obviously um, Arsenal maybe getting their first Premier League title in 19 years and overthrowing the defending champions, shall we say. But there's a long way to go. There's a long way to go. There is a massive game coming up and Arsenal need to hold their nerve. And with the games that they've got coming up, it's going to be very difficult, but they can certainly do it. Is it is my confidence slipping? My confidence, if I was an Arsenal fan, well... From, from the outside looking in, from a pers per perspective of someone that's backed Arsenal for the majority of this season, it is slipping a little bit because City are playing unbelievable football right now and they're absolutely dominating teams left, right and centre, regardless of what competition it is. But I still think Arsenal have got a big say in this and I think if Arsenal do play it right and I think if the chips are, are, are down and I think if the stars align and all that kind of cliche and good stuff, I think Arsenal definitely can manage to pull the rabbit out of the bag and make this title race even better than what it uh, is building up to right now between these two. It is looking very interesting. But those are just the thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, feelings, whatever you're going to call it. This guy, I want to know what you guys think. What do you make of the title running? Arsenal, Manchester City, all of that good stuff. I want to know your thoughts, your comments, opinions, predictions, feelings on that title race down below in the comment section. I'm sure it'll make for interesting reading. Uh, otherwise, hit the like button on the way up. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you're new and want to see more content like this. Both things always and forever be greatly appreciated. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and listening. I've been Fletch. This has been another Fletch Talks video. I want to know who you think will win the Premier League title this season. That will make for interesting reading down below. And I will see and speak with you all again soon in another video.